Hello, everybody. Uh, we're one week out from E3. Yay! That's my soul crying. Uh, no, E3, very exciting, incredible hard work. Everyone here behind the scenes has been toiling to get ready for what is, uh, it, it, it's like the pilgrimage to Mecca, but it's video games. So um, uh, we're going to have a lot of content up during the week of E3, a ton. Keep on checking in. We're going to try to keep you guys updated about the new demos and interviews that we're going to have posting. But this week also, we're going to be having discussions about what we expect to see, what we hope to see, and what we're going to be looking out for, not just from Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo, but some of the other publishers as well, because you know their decisions do have a lot of impact on how we're going to be appreciating which console we're going to be buying. But what I kind of want to talk about today is how to read E3. Uh, it's so big, it's so flashy, and there's so much of that special kind of industry speak, you know, those catchphrases, like immersive, a catchphrase that has yet to die, which is beyond my complete understanding, that you know, sometimes you have to sort of parse what's being said to get to what the actual message is and to try to glean that information. And in this case, have an understanding of what the next generation of consoles, how that's going to impact gaming, how it's going to improve gaming, or maybe how it's going to just continue doing a lot of things that they've already done, now with pretty graphics. We've been hearing quite a bit lately that games are being designed to play the way that you want to play them. And yes, that works, but we can all see those rigid ways where you can go very stealthy or very combat oriented. It doesn't feel sort of dynamic inside of the game world. And that's gonna be an interesting thing. Are people gonna say there's so much choice available to you and the game really does offer it and you're not always coming up against some imposition or some restriction in the game that doesn't let you play it the way you want to. This is a very hard thing to do when you're looking at demos. It can last anywhere from five to about 15 minutes. And of course, they've cherry picked that one aspect of the game that highlights certain gameplay elements, but you don't get that sense of what happens two, three, four hours in the game when you're really absorbed in it. I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but pay attention to the new IPs. That's the best shot of seeing a development team do something new and different with the hardware that's now been made available. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty, but they're probably not gonna be showing that same level of innovation. And of course, we're gonna have a new generation of consoles. That's when we can get new content and we can kind of free ourselves from the threes, the fours, and the fives that seem to be following the title of every single game. And my, my, my final thought is, there's no way to stop the fanboyism, but try to separate yourself from it. As I've said before, I have every interest in seeing both Microsoft and Sony succeed. Yes, they're gonna be saying some stupid things, and yes, they're gonna be showing some awesome things, but it's not a zero-sum game that one is that much better than the other. I'm not saying make your informed purchase decision. I wouldn't recommend anybody doing a pre-order the minute that E3 is over, but at the same time, it's very unclear what the benefits and all of the deficits of these consoles are gonna be, and all of that fray and all of that fear that's going on out there really doesn't help with clarity. All right, our question this week yeah, it has something to do with things we, I think, all hope to hear once E3 starts next week is from Glass Muxic. Hey, Adam, curious to know if you think that EA's recent move away from online passes and hinting at scaling down other anti-consumer practices is connected to the recent news regarding Microsoft and potentially Sony's in-console measures against used games. Despite the short-term goodwill it earned them, do you think it was simply a case of them realizing that console manufacturers were, in the future, going to do the job for them? Many thanks, a Brit expat in the Netherlands. All right, Glass Muxic, uh, I have thought the exact same thing. When uh, EA made the announcement, I assumed this must have some bearing on what Sony and Microsoft are doing with their consoles. I don't know if it's essentially having something to do with used games, the blocking of used games. I'm still of the mind that we will not see a zeroing out of all used games to play on the new consoles. It doesn't make good business sense. I think we'll see an adjustment of how it'll work. But I do wonder if the idea that EA sort of runs their own gate to get onto Microsoft and Sony's online service, that that is something that just can't happen with the brand new consoles, that more or less uh, Sony and Microsoft are gonna take on that burden of gatekeeping and accessing the online content. I mean, if you think about how focused, especially Microsoft was, but Sony was as well, about what the online means to them, I think trying to find new inhibitions to play your games online does not work in concert with them, and they must have you know, been able to make a case to EA, and maybe some other publishers out there, to just kind of chill out and let everyone enjoy their games the way they're meant to be played in totality, which is both single player 
and multiplayer. Uh, this is something I expect to be answered in some degree once we're at E3, and if it isn't, uh, I will find that a little bit distressing, and I fully imagine all of you will as well. All right, there we are with Seth. So something, uh, we're gonna be doing some variant on this, uh, hopefully every day from E3 with my thoughts of what's going on. Uh, please don't hold me to that. It is a chaotic production schedule that we're getting ourselves into. We're gonna have this stuff up as quickly as possible. Having said that, if that's not there, trust me, there'll be so much other content really in-depth looks at long games, more than I've ever gotten to do when I was doing television, because we don't have to do demos for seven and a half minutes. We can do it as long as the demo is. So I'm about as excited as you, because it's a brand new E3 for me.